But we gotta talk about how much blood the heart can pump in a given amount of time. And that is called cardiac output. So this term cardiac output refers to how much blood comes out of the heart in a given amount of time. And we're gonna say CO as cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. So I'll label it. So CO is cardiac output. HR is heart rate. SV is stroke volume. Cardiac output, again, is how much blood comes out of the heart in a minute. The units for that are milliliters per minute. Does cardiac output stay the same in our daily lives throughout the day, or does it go up and down to change in our day? Yes, change. You know, like if you start exercising, your tissues need more fuel. Okay, they need more oxygen, more more um, sugars, more nutrients, and so your heart needs to be pump more blood in a given amount of time. Okay, so it changes. Can heart rate change? What happens to cardiac output if heart rate goes up according to this equation? Yeah, it goes up, right? I mean, if, if this goes up, that's got to go up. I mean, you can, just, you can just substitute it for really simple numbers. Imagine the heart rate's one, stroke volume's one. So one times one equals what? One, <laughs> right? If you change this one to a two, what does that change to? Two. 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 Okay, so if this goes up, that goes up. And that makes sense, all right? So if we want to pump more blood through our body, our heart just has to be faster. Okay, and, and that's exactly what happens. You know, during exercise, heart rate goes up, pumps more blood in a given amount of time. What are the units for heart rate? If you're to measure heart rate, it's like 63 beats per minute. Okay. Stroke volume is different. Stroke volume is the amount of blood that comes out of your heart with each beat. Okay, so this is the amount of blood that comes out of the left ventricle with each beat. The units for that are milliliters per beat. It, I mean, this is actually like a pretty, it's, it's not a very uh, tricky concept. It, it's kind of simple. I mean, imagine that, uh, like an analogy would be, you've got uh, a newborn baby, and you go in for a checkup, and the doctor's like, how many ounces of formula is the baby drinking in a day? How would you calculate that? Like, let's say you wanted to measure in a day how many ounces of formula your kid is, is consuming. How, like, literally, how would you logistically tackle that? How many, how many bottles? Eat? And then how many how ounces many are in each bottle, right? <laughs> so how many bottles, that's heart rate. It's like how many times the heart beats. And then how many um, the ounces are in each bottle, that's stroke volume, okay? So you just, that's simple multiplication. Okay. We know that we can change heart rate with sympathetic and parasympathetic activity. So we can modulate that with, you know, up or down based on the needs of the body. Can we change stroke volume? It's how much blood gets pumped through each heart with each beat. Can we change that? We can change that, okay? We can change how much blood is pumped with each beat. And, um, the equation for stroke volume, the equation for stroke volume is this. It's the amount of blood in the heart before it pumps. So blood before contract subtracted by the amount of blood after it contracts. I mean, first off, like when the heart beats, do you think all the blood in the ventricles are completely squeezed out? You no, know, there's quite a bit of blood that's left in there, like 25% of the blood remains in the ventricles because they don't just let things be completely. So stroke volume is the blood before it contracts, how much is in there before, minus how much blood comes out after it contracts. Okay, this would be like, um, you know, you're, you're measuring the amount of formula your, your kid is consuming in a day, but then you look at those bottles after the kid's finished, and you're like, wait, there's some, still some formula in there, right? Like the kid's not completely finishing it. So if you're making 12 ounce bottles, or I don't even know how many ounces are 
that you bottle anymore. <laughs> but like you make like a 12 ounce bottle and two ounces are at the bottom, the stroke volume would really be 10, you know, before or minus out. Okay. All right, so if we want to increase stroke volume, what would we have to do to this value, the blood in the heart before it contracts, up or down? Up, uh, we'd have to fill the heart up more. This happens automatically with exercise. So when we're exercising, the blood returning to the heart is coming back faster through mechanisms that we'll talk about next week. So, so we're like running, blood's rushing back to the heart. That's gonna cause the, the heart and the ventricles to fill up more. So the beginning stroke volume, the blood before contraction, increases due to exercise. So we'll say increase the uh, exercise. So that's convenient. When we're exercising, that's exactly when we need a higher stroke volume. We're automatically going to increase the blood before the contraction of the ventricles. That's going to increase stroke volume. If we increase stroke volume, what's that going to do to cardiac output? Increase it, right? Okay. Pretty simple. If we want to further increase stroke volume, what do we have to do to this value, blood after contraction? Lower it. Empty out more blood out of the heart. Can we do that? Do you think the heart can do that? Yes. In fact, we can increase, we can um, decrease this via contractility. Contractility is a term that describes how forcefully the heart is contracting. Sympathetic nervous system, it doesn't just tell the heart to be faster, it tells the heart to be stronger. And so if the heart's working harder with each beat, it's gonna squeeze out more blood with each beat, it's gonna decrease the ending stroke volume, that's going to increase stroke volume. If we increase stroke volume, we increase cardiac output. So those are the three basic ways that we can increase cardiac output. Increase heart rate, increase how much blood is in the ventricle before it contracts, or decrease how much blood is in the ventricle after it contracts. Um, you ever hear about like athletes, really elite athletes that are in awesome shape, like Olympians? What's their resting heart rate like? Yeah, super low, right? Super low rest of heart rate. Why do you think that is? Yes, their S, their stroke volume is huge. Their stroke volume is huge because they have a giant heart, right? <laughs> so when you exercise your heart through exercise, like aerobic exercise, it's like any muscle. Any muscle that gets exercised is going to grow stronger, right? Athletes exhibit cardiac hypertrophy, and their, their heart's literally getting bigger. So if we follow this around, you got at rest, I mean this is not when they're exercising, this is like at rest when they're just sitting around. Their body doesn't need but so much blood because they're not exercising, they're just sitting there. They need a certain amount of cardiac output, okay? Their stroke volume is naturally gigantic because they have a very large heart, large ventricle, large stroke volume. If stroke volume goes way up, and you only need a certain amount of cardiac output, what's going to happen to heart rate? Go way down. You just don't need that much cardiac output. So heart rate goes way down because their hearts are big. 